demonstration of the Thermotron SC-12066, a ultra-low temperature environmental chamber. It is equipped with a digital programmable controller with touchscreen display, USB ports, RS-232 ports, Ethernet interface. It has a temperature range between minus 70 to plus 180 degrees C. It has an inside dimensions of 40 inches long by 40 inches wide by 45 inches high, or a total of almost 42 cubic feet. It has a optional window in the front door, two side six inch cable ports, dual stage refrigeration compressors with air cooled condenser, R404A and R508B refrigerants. It is powered by 208 volts, three phase, requiring 76.5 amps. First, we're going to take a walk around the back and show you the main switch. This is the main switch to turn it on. Now we'll go around to the front. We're going to wait just a couple of minutes here for it to load go through self-tests, and boot up to the main screen. Okay, now that we're on the main screen, before we even start, I want to open up and show you the chamber. Uh, this is a touch screen. You can use either the pen or your finger. I'm going to turn the light on inside. Just to get started, I'm going to go into our manual mode. Now, here's where you can change your set point. It's very simple. You can either put in a minus value if you want, or you can put in a positive value. We're going to go up to 177 here going to enter. And we're going to run. Now, as you can see, the throttle right here is on at 100%, which means right now this is going to begin to heat and go up to the set point of 177. As you can see, it's already rising. Now, once we get up to that high set point, which is the high temperature limit for this particular chamber. We are then going to come all the way down back to minus 70. Uh, the spec uh, normally goes to minus 65, but it will achieve minus 70. Um, there's some very nice options in the manual. Um, and it's also pretty easy. You can set up your graphs here. You can, for example, your alarms. I have 
The high limit set at 185. I have the low limit set for 180. And of course, this puts us back at our main screen. So we're gonna head on up to the higher temperature and we'll come back in a little bit and see how it's doing. Okay, as you can see, we're up to 179.8 which is the high limit for the chamber. Now what we're gonna do, another thing, the system has a burned in high limit as well. So that if you hit 180 degrees, it will turn off the heaters. However, once it drops below that, it will kick them back on. But what we're going to do now is we're going to change our set point. We're going to clear and I'm going to put in minus 70. Enter and we'll hit run. There we go. The compressors have come on. So now this is going to go all the way down past ambient temperature, down to minus 70. Um, again, we'll come back in a little bit and see how it's doing. Oh, before we go though, I'll just show you here. This is sort of nice. Uh, all of this data can be um, uh, uploaded into other systems as well. Here we can see our curve where we started off at 25 degrees and we made it up to 80, uh, 180 uh, in about 42 minutes, which is pretty good. Uh, the reason that this is running um, very well above spec is because, as I had mentioned earlier about the probe in there that you can see up at the top, we don't have any product in here. Because it's a large chamber, there could be a lot of products in there that could also be absorbing heat as well. So this is the chamber as a standalone, and it's, it's, I've done a few of these chambers, and this one is absolutely excellent. We'll go back to our manual screen. Make another point is the ramp. Now right now I have no ramp rate, which means this is gonna go as fast as it can in one direction or another. However, if your test application calls for a slow ramp up or a slow ramp down, you can set this to any degree that you want by simply, let's say we wanted it to go five degrees um, per minute. It'll ramp up at slide five degrees or it'll ramp down at five degrees per minute. But for now, we wanna go as fast as we can. So we'll just enter a zero. Go back to our main screen. Oh, we're already on our way down. And we'll come back in probably about 45 minutes to 50 minutes, and we should be all the way down. We'll see how it's doing then. We've returned now. Uh, I set it for 70, but whoa, we've made it down to minus 71. It'll bounce off of 72 a little bit too. Uh, we're still running in the manual mode. Um, wow, we're way down there. Uh, couple things I'd like to show you. The manual is very complete when it comes to using all the functions on the touch screen. I'll just point out a couple things here. It's got an ample supply of service information, parts listings. It's very complete. The actual control itself, we'll bring you up there. Hold on a second. All right, this is the actual manual itself on how to run the machine. Uh, all of the menu-driven displays are well illustrated in here. Uh, how to modify your programs, how to set up um, profiles. And also importantly, I wanted to point this out, is also how to set the thermal alarm. Again, the thermal alarm is basically a low-level and a high level uh, limits and how they work 
how you can have your range here and then it will warn you, then it will actually alarm. It's very good. Uh, the manual is also available online as well. And uh, they give very good illustrations on how the system works, on understanding the refrigeration system. Uh, for example, in system information here, normally when we cascade system, we normally hook our gauges up to both compressors, both the high stage and the low stage. This is not necessary with this piece of equipment. This is very good to serve to me because it has its own gauges built right in. So you can, before you even start the system, it'll let you know that all your static pressures, your discharge pressures, your suction pressures are all in working order. If these were not, then the system would not run. Uh, it has a very nice colorized display of the actual refrigeration system itself. Uh, you can actually learn a lot just by reading this and as I said also on the manual as well it explains to you the different curves for not only the air temperature but also the product temperature as well. So we've pretty much done here. We'll go back to our main menu and we're now going to stop our system Okay, I'm going to open the chamber now. I'll turn on the light inside so you can see. There you go. And as I mentioned before, we have two large ports on each side where you can have a feed through for your, uh, if you're uh, testing electronically active components as well. It's very easy to use. And if you should have any questions at all, there's a very good help page here that will go through an introduction, setup, operation. It'll explain everything you really know, need to know about the system. If you read through this, you'll have enough information to comfortably run this piece of equipment. So, and this completes this demonstration.